Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News, everybody. I'm Rick McCone with our host. I'm the host, I think. Uh, <laughs> McMaster's Price Mortgage and Jackie and Ruby with Century 21. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Fantastic. Wild and busy real estate weekend. It was busy. Kinda. Maybe, yeah. maybe kind of, sort of. Well, Even if I've it got... wasn't, we'll still say it was. Yeah, we will. Sure. We're just. This is the channel that makes stuff up. <laughs> All of these charts, we just we I, I I learned how to draw them myself, and uh, and even the financial data that Pat shares, he, he just it's all power channel of misinformation, <laughs> channel of mis yeah disinformation. So disinformation, speaking of yeah. information, last week when we left, um, I had mentioned when we were taking a peek at things that we would have to look closely at Memorial Day because the numbers always go down. They come back up. Fourth of July, they go down, go back up to where they were every holiday, except this one. They dipped, started to come back up, and they dipped. So there are things changing out there. And we knew that inventory would come up. It's still coming up. And we track that every day here. But this is updated on weekends. And we're at 9,451. And we're starting to pass that 2020 level, uh, which is still, you know, historically low. So nothing earth shattering there, but it's the rate of how fast it's going up. That's interesting. Almost matching what we saw here in 2020 going up towards from March. Remember they told us to stay home. So everybody put their homes on the market thinking I got to get up underneath this. And we were not expecting this though. Sales per month. And this is contracts that were written in April and early May that are now closing. Look at how far that has dropped. Now we have seasonal drops, but this is about a month and a half too early. We weren't expecting that. May closings are usually pretty good. Then it gets yeah. hot and they slow down just like, like here. And if I, uh, when I read the comments, they had an ear since the market downturn started. We have seen all of the early dominoes fall. If we were in a non-serious situation, then there are several middle ranking dominoes that would not topple. And the early ones would start to stand upright again. But instead, we're starting to see the middle order start to wobble and fall over. Here's one of them, number of closed listings. They go on to say, there are two things that concern me about the sales decline this year. It's taken place in May, which is a healthy market. Should be one of our busiest months for closing. Two, we are seeing a very steep drop in a short period. So he's saying that uh, this is kind of a bit of a surprise. You know, we were expecting movement there, but Crawford Market Index, you see, is dropping like a rock. Um, but it's done that before. See, it did it here. It's done it here. But it's going down much faster. And that's the market where 100 is considered a balanced market. And we're sitting here right now at 272. So we're knocking on the balance market's door. And house price appreciation is starting to come down just a little bit. So it's looking like um, the, I don't want to say red flags, because I think approaching a balanced market is not a bad thing. And I think it's going to happen as these indicators look like by the end of summer. So, Pat, any earth-shattering lending news out there, or was it a quiet week once again? Did I lose you? We lost Pat. Hmm? Hi, Pat. Now you're back. Hey, on my back. Oh, was I gone? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my fault. <laughs> Just during your turn. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I think Rick's playing with the buttons though, behind the scenes there, like last week when he just made me vanish and go away. Um, <laughs> I think Pat yeah, actually, wanted to make a grand entrance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean the the numbers came out. Obviously, employment numbers came out last week. There was some jostling around. I mean, today, right now, we saw. I this is uh, this is rates, interest rates, or the a ten year Treasury. This is basically looking at a at a three year. I think it's a three year. Uh, no, five year, five year. So if you see here right now, I mean, Barry Habib, the service that I follow, says three and a quarter 
We're going to see some resistance at three and a quarter. Right now, if you can see, it's 3.04 on the 10-year. So we got about 20 basis points on the Treasury before we hit a, a hard ceiling because this hard ceiling goes back to 2018. This is going to be a ceiling that we're going to run into short term. So if you see, hit that ceiling, rates might back off a little bit more. But we've had, obviously, this run-up from the beginning, begin, end of the year, beginning, beginning of this year, all the way up here. So we're seeing a little back and forth. Um you know, with the market slowing down, obviously that has a, you know, a effect. You know, obviously it's going to help. Rates pull them back a little bit. It's going to hurt. Not. It's going to help people that are out looking. Um, people, like I said, bottom line is people are kind of getting used to low to mid five percent range. You know, we might see rates tick up if they goes to three and a quarter on the ten year. I mean, my estimates are just as good as Janet Yellen because Janet Yellen said last week she had all wrong in inflation. So if the Secretary of Treasury gets it wrong, I can afford to get it wrong too once in a while. So, but um, three and a quarter is probably the ten-year Treasury cap. We might see high fives, sixes, but then we're gonna. I think we're just gonna muddle around here. So that's what it is on interest rates. Well, I think that. Uh... I did something wrong there. So there we go. I think there's, it's anybody's guess where interest rates are going. You just, you're hearing chatter that says that uh, uh, perhaps the economy is slowing down so much now that they may not have to pull the trigger as tight as they think they do in yeah. September. And then you've got people saying, we're going to be in this scenario of high inflation for a long time. So it's going to be Thank interesting to see what's going on. But ladies, what uh, what was the market like when you were out there this weekend? Well, I I took a weekend off pretty much, but I was forced to um, just because I had a procedure done last week. So I know Ruby was out running double hard. I did have a quick question for Pat after Ruby, if we can get back to it. But I, I'm going to let Ruby go because I know she was running hard. Well, um, I mean, we were out uh, showing our listings out in Cave Creek this weekend. We had several buyers. Um, actually, that really wasn't really over the weekend. It was Monday. So even though that was still considered um, the holiday, was it? No, this week. No, this weekend. Yeah, yeah this see, weekend. You were running. They all, you they were all were running together. So yeah. You don't know what day it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. You so ran it, all weekend. weekend it's Christmas next week, Ruby. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was out showing um, clients from Idaho homes um, by way of FaceTime. And uh, this morning I had to go out and show them again at 730 this morning by way of FaceTime. Their flight got canceled, so they weren't able to come into town. So I'm um, doing a double take on a couple of the properties that we looked at uh, yesterday. So I'm going to be writing an offer on one of them. And then uh, my appraisal came in above on another property that I'd written a few weeks ago. So we've got a clear to close and it was 25,000 above what our offer price was. So tell the, up. tell the, tell the Zillow story with that and the, oh, the this, seller and the agent. Yeah, yeah. This reference is back to um, our first show actually, where we um, had list the, Price was four hundred and eighty thousand. I think they wanted it to be priced where Zillow said was five hundred thousand. So they were forcing their agent to list it higher, and then we came in at four hundred and forty thousand, where I thought we should probably be priced, and the appraisal would come in right at that. And then um, pleasantly surprised today when we found out it came in uh, twenty five thousand dollars more. So, Why yeah. is there so much faith in the Zillow estimate? You think? makes no sense at all especially after what big, happened yeah i mean they they lost millions and millions yeah. kind of like you know that's how many viewers we have millions and millions but they lost all this money because they bought their homes mm -hmm. off of this estimate right so i think what it is i just don't think that news gets out to the general public no i don't think so either right. i think it's just kind of like held to the side and it's kind of that you get what you get um kind of information like it's not always disclosed yeah yeah well, jackie you had a question for pat well and i was going to say we did have some decent activity on our listings so yeah. that was a lot better than last weekend even during this last week but 
um, as I'm watching things, I, you know, I still think that, and I welcome this, I'm excited for us to have our buyers to have more choices. And I think as we build through the summertime, you know, everybody wants to say crash. I don't see a crash, but I think we're very aggressively getting to a much more balanced market, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. I have one concern though, and that concern is everything I'm reading about the quantitative tightening. And so I wanted to ask Pat today, what's your opinion when they start doing this? That's, that's my biggest fear. And I don't think a lot of people understand what's going to happen with that. So I thought it'd be awesome if you could kind of explain it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just talked to Jerry Powell today, actually. The Fed chair. So oh, <laughs> he just called me. So <laughs> no, I just, uh, you know me, I like to add a little humor. Um, you have to look at it. I, I, nobody really, obviously, like you said, I can't reference Janet Yellen. You know, she's the head of the treasury. And I mean, I, like I said, I give myself and Rick kudos. I, I follow this Barry Habib who's been spot out. Mm -hmm. He has, he's actually, he's gotten, I'll give a kudos out to him on that. It's not, it, I follow, you know, it's, you know, I don't have to be genius. I have to follow people that are geniuses or that are smarter than me. You know, that at least I try to do that. And he has had a, he gets this crystal ball award. He's got like three out of the last four years. They give it to this guy who's a crystal ball guy. And, um, I, like you said, I just don't trust some of these guys that are in the fed, but you have to look at it this way. Quantitative easing is going to be kind of challenging because, uh, there is concern about the huh? The quantitative tightening, tightening, easing. Yeah, the easing and tight. Yeah, excuse me, easing, tightening. You know, kind of all together, because obviously the last time they tightened was um, when we had low inflation. So they're going to be tightening when we're in a period of you know back when they tightened before inflation was at one and a half two percent. But Pat, really isn't it isn't it correct? They've never done tightening in a scenario like this. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we've never yeah. done tightening in an in inflationary period like this where rates are, you know, everything's going up. Uh, when they tightened things, it were just we're not, we were just not in a period like this. But you have to remember, this is one thing that Barry says, and I'm just going to give you general, there's a lot of numbers you can say thrown around, but they, you know, um, as far as there's a lot less supply out there on the tightening side. Last, when the last couple of years when they were tightening, we were doing trillions. They're gonna the the bonds being issued. There's not gonna be as many bonds issued this year because rates have gone up to five and a half percent. So there's not gonna be the supply. So that in itself has corrected some of that activity. Does that make sense? They're not gonna have to be buying um, or letting out. You know, there's there's the supply is just not gonna be there. So because we're talking, there's eight trillion dollars on the balance sheet right now. And they're saying of rolling off, uh, I think, what was the number, like 17 billion, you know, there, this tightening period is not going to happen all at once. They're saying, I read something several months ago, that's going to be two, 2025, 2026. They're going to do this gradually. It's not going to be all this. I think when you see the headlines, they're like, oh, the feds are going to tighten and there's going to be this come in and just tighten like uh, screws like you've never seen before. They're going to do this over the next three, four, or five years. So with, but you guys, I don't know. I'm not. A, there's a lot of analysis that could go into saying, okay, now that rates went up to five and a half percent versus two and a half to five and a half, um, that they roll that off. That's going to be a much more attractive rate for somebody to buy. So mm -hmm. the market could correct. You know, with rates going up, I think it's going to kind of lessen. Does that make sense? I mean, it's going to lessen that if rates were two and a half percent. Nobody's going to want to buy that two and a half percent coupon, yeah. but if, if it's at five and a half percent, you know, there's somebody out there who might buy the five and a half. So that's where rates going up. But don't, they, but don't they have to, don't they have to clamp down hard enough to take the steam out of the market? And I mean, housing market to yeah. get these investors that are taking this money through wall street and buying in bulk. Um, don't, I have certainly read that that has to go away. And the only way mm -hmm. to do that is to kind of put your thumb on housing for a, a period of time. And mm -hmm. that would be affected uh, by pulling back and unloading, offloading mortgage backed securities, which correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't that put the risk back on the bank? So therefore the bank prices in a premium on the mortgages. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, the servicing That's rights, there's a lot. Heard. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's so many technical figures. But like you said, the supply, I'll just look at the general supply and demand. And like you said, they, they got $8 trillion on the sheet. And their goal is basically, we're not just talking. I think when the news reports the Fed tightening, they make it sound like they're going to do this over the next one or two quarters. This is going to be the next Correct. three, four, five-year period. Yeah. This is not going to be one massive sell-off. And I think the the news likes to say, oh, they're going to sell $3 trillion. No, no. They're, it's, we're talking $17 billion, um, versus $8 trillion. That's It's just... They're gonna, and they're going to do this in the background with all their interest rates. This is going to be kind of like their, um, you know, the primary thing is going to be the, their Fed, federal funds rate. That's when one they're going to work with. But this in the well, background keep, is going to be kind of like a secondary faucet that they could turn on and off. That's why I keep so, showing this chart here. It shows that they're starting, right? Yeah. But barely. Yeah, barely. So and that's what's going to happen. So I don't think – I think it's going to be something that I think – Honestly, I think it's just a headline grabber that these news people are trying to, once again, it's one topic that they can scare people with. Yeah, there's a big glut of assets on the sheet. But like you said, now, you know, at one, the refinances have gone dropped dramatically. We were running at $2 trillion on refinance. Once, once you issue that or do that mortgage, that creates a supply that they have to, you know, do something with. If, if refinances are down a trillion, you know, a trillion and a half, that's that's stuff that they don't have to worry about anymore. So I think to, it, to answer your question, it's a technical question. You could get, we could sit and talk for a, 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 probably three hours on this because there's so many numbers that go into it. But I try to boil it down to the fact is, number one, there is a big supply out there, eight trillion. They're going to like you just show that chart. They're going to just do it, you know, you know, so it's um, number two is the supply is not there because, like I said, refinances are, are dramatically down. So that takes that out. So, And it's just something they're going to – I think they're going to use it as, as a faucet. They're going to just tweak it up. And I, it's something that I don't think you're even going to notice, honestly. I, I hope not. And the reason I was asking is because I'm still – just today, I had five or six emails from investors that have bought some of our previous – on that low end, that three to 450 price range – um, even on some of the listings that we have listed that are under contract right now, I had five or six emails from investors today asking, how do those offers look? Do we have anything else coming up on the market? All the investors of the big funds are still buying very aggressively. And that was like 30% of the market at one point. I don't know what the numbers are now, but I guess the reason, because I, I have seen all the headlines, I've seen all the, you know, scare that they're putting out there. And I saw the plan somewhere where it was like 56 billion was going to be not, not are we just easing now they're supposed to start selling and that there was a point, I think it was within the next three or four months that they were supposed to sell off 56 billion. And so what happens to the stock market and the hedge funds and what happens to those buyers? So mm -hmm. are they going to start pulling out of the market? Then we've got 30%. I, I, and I guess the reason I bring it up is because that is my one fear. Like, you know, we all know that three to 400 price point is it, at least it was the hardest that was being hit as far as a, a back off on sales. So those hedge funds go away, which are in that price point. What happens? Well, I was talking to one of my inspector friends over the weekend and he said that He's got so much, he's working with two investment groups and they're, they're giving him so many homes to inspect and he's got to hire two more people. And I said, well, I thought maybe that would start winding down a little bit. He goes, no, they're ramping up, you know, five and a quarter percent doesn't shake them up that much. So, um, so somebody needs to pick that up. So. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's on my end. I forgot to disconnect the phone today. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. So I just muted you for a second while that's going. So, um, so, so the investor traffic is definitely up there and it's still continuing, but it'll eventually go away. And I think that's going to have to go away. And Jackie, I want to echo what you said earlier, um, that we're not looking at these numbers that are turning and, and saying, this is bad. We're looking no. at this going good, good. We need normality. We could use yeah. some balance and, you know, the quicker we get there, the happier I'll be. So I, uh, Somebody said today on a video that they sensed my tone had changed. And I said, well, that's because the number changed. Yeah. And it changed dramatically. Yeah. 
So I, I mean, don't think I it's think, a bad thing. No, I think it's a good thing. I mean, this is what I mean, you know, like Jackie and Ruby, I'm sure this is what people buyers have been complaining about the last year is that they've had no chance to get in. And I yeah. think, you, you know, you cannot, I mean, and I think, and I, I personally think you're going to see the headlines pop out, you know, you're going to see the scary headlines. Oh my God, we're in, but the smart person that is looking long-term, um, yeah, does it go down a little bit further or slow up a little bit further? Yeah. But, um, I, I, what I'm saying, I think this is a good thing is it's, it's mm-hmm. perfect. Well, I hope so. And I think, you know, look, if the bottom's going to fall out, we're going to see it. So yeah. we won't. I've I've always said I'm not yeah. going to say here comes a crash because I don't see the numbers yet that say it's coming. I'm seeing numbers now that are changing rapidly that could get us towards a balanced market. Now, if we get that balanced market and these numbers are continuing to change, then I will I'll tell yeah, you. Sure. Hey, look, yeah, this yeah. is starting to get that we got it's kind of where we wanted to be, but it's still going down. This is starting yeah. to get ugly. It's like skiing down the mountain yeah. and I just passed the lodge. <laughs> you know, no, I wanted to stop at the lodge. You know, so you know, so I'll, I'll let people know before they ski past the lodge that it's looking like it's going to be a a problem. So I want everybody to have a fabulous week, and we will see you back here same day, same time. Take care. Take Bye. care.